Very cute, kid, but you're not fooling us for a second. We are on to your game and your highly evolved ways. Yeah, let's look at 10 mind-blowing facts about these larval humans. Don't be fooled by their cute, chubby faces and delightful babbling because our larval humans are strange and powerful creatures. From their factory-installed brain power and culinary taste to their monstrous biology, human infants and toddlers are darn near beings from another world. First up, children are tooth monsters. Baby skulls are weird enough with their tiny, toothless maws, but things just get weirder as they age. Behold the living tooth factory inside every child's skull. Where did you think those permanent chompers came from anyway? Next up, babies are number crunchers. You can argue all day over whether math is a human creation or a human discovery. Either way, we come into this world preloaded with innate number sense. Our brains naturally extract numbers from the surrounding environment in much the same way it identifies colors. Studies show that while infants have no grasp of human number systems, they can still identify changes in quantity. Three cheesy goldfish versus six, there's a definite difference. It might not feel like it when we're doing our taxes or splitting a restaurant tab, but we're all born accountants. Here's another one, babies have skull windows. Everyone knows that babies have a soft spot on their heads. It's called the anterior fontanelle, and you can think of it as a membrane window into the skull. It fills in after a couple of years, but until that time, doctors can actually conduct baby brain scans using an ultrasound. Our younglings have these strange little soft spots because our ancient ancestors jumped through two evolutionary hoops around the same time, walking upright and increased brain mass. The bipedal shift required a major reconfiguration of the birth canal. It became narrower just as our stupid brains were becoming fatter. Next up, babies are tiny Sherlocks. Think you can pull something over the larval ones? Well, think twice about your little lies because each one is a natural Euclidean born to navigate a three-dimensional world of fixed and movable objects. For instance, kids use geometric clues to navigate through rooms. Given all the means of navigating their environment, they're most likely to use the lengths of walls in a room to remember where a toy is hidden rather than color or even decoration. Oh, and hey, get this, all babies are unfinished. As we just discussed, humanity's evolutionary ascension from quadruped to biped caused some serious problems. Comparative biologists believe that human infants would stay in the womb longer if the escape path wasn't so narrow. This is why you'll often hear an infant's first three months of life referred to as the fourth trimester. By all rights, the little half-baked goblin should still be inside the womb, but we just had to start walking upright. We've all heard stories about adults with synesthesia. Their senses intermingled in a way that allows them to taste orange, see an E flat, and hear the music of a delicious glass of juice. It's supposedly what gives such self-professed synesthetic musicians as Aphex Twin their creative edge. But what if I told you that all babies are little Aphex Twins and not in a creepy way? Yes, according to a 2011 study published in Psychological Science, we come into this world with our senses so joined that stimulating just one of them reliably stimulates the others. They're essentially tripping at all times. We're down to our final four factoids now, so here's a big one. Babies have sponge brain. They come into this world with a lot of preloaded programming, but they still have a lot of learning to do. As such, infants are actually more conscious of the world around them than adults. It's just a different sort of consciousness, one more like a lantern than a flashlight. Here's another fact. Babies are womb poopers. Babies poop anywhere they please, and that includes inside your body. After all, they spend nine months in there, and they're not just kicking and listening to Mozart either. The fetuses, gentle viewer, are pooping in their own amniotic fluid. A 2003 study observed the anuses of 240 fetuses sonographically between weeks 15 and 41 of gestation. The researchers detected one or more defecations in every single test subject, especially during weeks 28 and 34. We even have a name for this stuff, meconium. Here's your penultimate fact. The little ones have ghoulish appetites. Babies and toddlers are known for their picky appetites. What would they eat if left to their own devices? Well, according to a notable 1939 study, they'd probably gorge themselves on a ghoulish feast of brains and bone marrow. Or at least that's what Clara Davis found in her famous study of self-selecting diet among orphanage babies. Of course, the Davis study is hardly bulletproof, but Gulp author Mary Roach also points to a study from psychologist Paul Rosen that found children ages 16 to 29 months ate stuff like ketchup-laden cookies, dish soap, and fake, but edible, dog poo in rather high percentages. At that age, they haven't absorbed their parents' food prejudices yet 
and the toddler mouth will eat what it eats. Here we are, final fact. Now, we've established that babies and toddlers are skull-windowed, sponge-brained, tooth-faced, psychedelic monsters intent on usurping our rule. But here's one final bit of mind-rending horror. They are tough as nails. I'm not saying babies and toddlers are impervious to harm, but they're nowhere near as fragile as we often believe. Their bones are more flexible than ours, and they boast more of them, making toddlers better able to absorb impact. Plus, their extra fat cushions their falls and provides provide stored energy for lean times. They're even better suited to emotionally handle stress than adults are. In fact, according to Lawrence Gonzalez's book, Deep Survival, Who Lives, Who Dies, and Why, children between ages of two and six have one of the highest survival rates of any age group. We could not stop them if we wished. So there you have it. I hope you have renewed fear and respect for our larval humans. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. Kids prefer much more intense sweetness and saltiness, more so than adults, and it doesn't decrease until late adolescence. There's something so pure about a child's terror. Wow, did I just say that? Look, we're not advocating that you go out and eat a baby. How irresponsible would that be? But per